September 1939 and Ireland wakes up to the news that a second world war has broken out and immediately begin to feel peer pressure to get involved from all sides. It's a world war after all, so unless you're planning to sit it out on the moon, you should probably grab a gun. But it really hasn't been all that long since that little scuffle over national sovereignty, so the Irish aren't exactly jumping to get all chummy with Britain quite yet. And word got out that in Germany they slap raw pork mince on bread and just tuck in. So everyone's like, well fuck that, we're not siding with those lunatics. Much to both Britain and Germany's chagrin, Ireland chooses neutrality with the following declaration. We we'll leave yous to it lads. But just because we weren't interested in them, didn't mean they weren't interested in us. Nazi propaganda minister Josef Goebbels had a plan for Ireland, but it didn't include an invasion. He wanted to make films about Ireland, and did. But why on earth would he do that? I'll tell you after my snazzy new title sequence. Here, check this out. Not bad, eh? Anyway, back before World War II officially kicked off, Hitler was really hoping England and Germany could be friends. But not even the home of jellied eels was interested in raw mince on bread and conflict became inevitable. Problem was that Germans didn't hate English people, but Hitler needed Germans to think the English were baddies so that they'd fully support dropping a load of bombs on them. And so Goebbels task was to produce propaganda that made the English look like monsters. But how on earth do you do that? The plan was simple. Make films about Ireland's rebellion against Britain while depicting the English as everything the German audiences were supposed to hate, while portraying the Irish as, well, Germans. Just look at this Cayley. It's not much of a jig, is it? I am having the crack. This extremely not Irish dance is from Der Fox of Glenarvan from 1940. It tells the story of Gloria, an Irish woman married to an Englishman, Granson, who is the local justice of the peace. But a love triangle forms when Gloria is wooed by a rebellious Irish revolutionary, Lord Ennis. Don't you worry, honey, we've all been there. So now we have a forbidden love story set against a backdrop of war, which truly makes it the attack of the clones of its day. I love you, Gloria, more than I love killing the Brits. And by God, you don't need me to tell you that's a hell of a lot. Gloria was played by Olga Chichawa, who was a confidant of both Goebbels and Adolf Hitler. But years later, she was revealed to have been a Russian spy all along. It just goes to show any celebrity just might be reporting the West's secrets back to the Kremlin, and you'd never know. You'll be glad to know that this is one forbidden love story where everything works out, as Gloria and Ennis the Revolutionary do end up together. And Granson? Well, he's captured by the rebels and strung up in a burning house. Talk about Mills and Swoon. This Goebbels guy sure knew how to make your heart flutter, despite looking like a homemade scone. There was also Mein Leben für Irland from 1941, another forbidden love story, but this time it's a young fella called Patrick who falls deeply in love with his mate's mum, Maeve, the instant they meet. Patrick desperately wants to give his friend some siblings, but is heartbroken to see Maeve talking, talking to another man, who is, of course, an Irish revolutionary. All Irish rebels are highly desirable in the Goebelverse. The film is set in an Irish school where all the teaching staff are English and attempting to raise the boys properly, aka into Englishmen. That means a serving of Beef Wellington three times each day and instead of learning maths, they have to watch the Antiques Roadshow. Most of their classes are lectures about how British colonialism was actually a really good thing. So not much has changed there, huh? That's, uh, that's what they're still teaching today, isn't it? I actually don't know if that's true at all. I, I don't know what's on the British curriculum. I just assume it's stuff about 
blowing up foxes. Needless to say, the Irish students hate their English teachers and their high hats, so it's only a matter of time before they revolt and storm the... school's armory? Now, look, I'm no cinema sins, but keeping a load of guns in a school that you're using specifically to stamp out rebel descent? I guess they were there so that each teacher could quattro wield four rifles and shoot the students if this ever happened. They just happened to lose the race to the storage cupboard. Soon all of Dublin is a war zone and the English have to send in a metal slug. Fun bit of trivia about this battle scene, the person responsible for the explosion effects had to leave mid-production to blow up real people on the front lines and in his absence a load of extras were badly hurt right here due to a lack of professional supervision. Germans blowing themselves up while making Nazi propaganda? <laughs> what a blunder. But hey, they got the shot. Now, I know what you're wondering. And it's not. Do the Irish rebels successfully win their freedom by overthrowing this tyrannical force? No. You want to know if Patrick gets to shag his mate's mom. Oh, maybe you wouldn't put it in so crass a way while speaking aloud. You'd say, do Maeve and Patrick end up together? But you can't hide from me. I see you. I know you. Our minds are now one. And you want to know, does Patrick shag his mate's mom? Well, if you really want to know, you'll just have to sit through 90 minutes of Nazi propaganda like I did. Ah, no, I'm only joking. Patrick dies a complete VL. <laughs> but also, yes, he helped the rebels achieve victory, so thank you for your service. In fact, if it wasn't for Patrick, Lord Ennis, James Connolly, Porrick Pierce, Michael Collins, and everyone else who fought for an independent Ireland, we'd all be speaking English today. You may have noticed that the English people in these films are portrayed as an authoritarian force who use violence to maintain power. They storm places of worship, burst into homes and make demands at gunpoint. They even shoot a family dog for barking too much. <laughs> what a bunch of Nazis! It's hard to imagine people being able to make these movies without passing out from chronic hypocrisy syndrome. But they genuinely didn't seem to make the connection until it was time to screen the films in the countries that Nazi Germany was occupying. Once in front of a Polish audience, for instance, the stories suddenly stopped being, aren't the English just awful? We should bomb those guys, and became a call to arms. Goebbels had to ban screenings of his own propaganda just in case it actually worked. The irony is piling up here faster than on an insecure teenager's Twitter timeline. Another propaganda film made to paint the English in a bad light was Titanic, which Goebbels also had to pull from cinemas because by the time it came out, Germany wasn't doing too well in the war and, you know, a big sinking ship. As analogies go, it's a little on the nose. The jokes write themselves. At least I wish they would. I'm racking my brains here. Titanic did end up being released under the Soviets, but they used the exact same film as an anti-capitalist story. It's interesting how each of these films were made with only one message in mind, but how they took on completely different meanings depending on who they were screened to, even without being changed. Yes, that is interesting, Owen. I agree. Have a like on your video. Once Goebbels realised that Ireland's story was of no value as Nazi propaganda beyond the borders of the fatherland, he was no longer interested in the Emerald Isle. Besides, at that point the German army was having their frozen dicks kicked in by the Russians, so I guess he was preoccupied with the walls closing in around him. <laughs> Invading Russia. Whose bright idea was that? But what's the verdict? Well, I'm going to award these films Nine out of ten. <laughs> uh, no, they get two out of ten. One point for being of historical interest and one point for when they blew themselves up making Nazi propaganda. Oh! 
Scheiße.